Hello, everyone. Welcome to the next week in our course. And this week, we're going to be focusing on writing the cause or effect essay. We're not going to write a cause and effect essay. We're going to write one or the other. So right now, I'm in your book, Q Skills for Success 5, and I'm on page 247. So if you want to pause this recording and get to page 247 and follow along with me, you can. You don't have to do that either because I have it up on the screen, either way. So I'm going to be doing some lecture today to really try to delve deeply into this cause-effect essay, your first essay that you're going to write for the course, and um, we want to make it a good one, okay? So there's two ways to, to write this, and we're either going to focus on a causal analysis essay, which means the causes of something. What are the causes of air pollution? Um, you know, emissions from the car or agricultural emissions, those kinds of things. Factory emissions. Or what are the effects of something? So what are the effects of poor sleep? Well, fatigue and poor diet and crankiness or whatever. So we're really going to look at you choosing either a cause or effect and focusing on that. So let's understand this a little bit more deeply. So I'm here. We're trying to find the reasons behind something or the results of something. This is either going to be cause or effect. Now, in your essay, you're not going to write both. You're not going to give a cause and then give the effect of that cause. You're going to focus on one or the other. Okay? So here, the causal analysis essay looks at multiple causes le leading to one result. So poor sleep, high stress, bad diet, all cause a lack of energy. Okay, so we could see this in our thesis, which is our statement of what we're going to argue, what we're going to propose to our reader. Poor sleep, high stress, and bad diet can lead to a lack of energy. So that's what this person's going to argue. And that would be, those are the three causes. Or we can flip this around and we can focus on an effect essay. The effect essay examines how one major situation has a number of different results. Okay. Usually begins with describing a particular situation and then analyzing it for its effects. <clears throat> so let's look at a thesis statement for an effect essay. So here we have too much caffeine can result in difficulty sleeping, headaches, and nervousness. So here's the effects of this condition. The condition is having too much caffeine. Some of us drink too much coffee or tea or whatever with caffeine. So what could happen to us? What, how could it affect us? And the, your three supporting paragraphs, you would have a whole paragraph on difficulty sleeping. You'd have a whole paragraph on headaches. And you'd have a whole paragraph on nervousness. You would support those three paragraphs, but all relating back to your thesis of too much caffeine. Okay? So <clears throat> we're going to look at an essay right now. And we're going to take it apart and see what, uh, what all the good elements of this essay is. And then we're going to also have um, some work we're going to do with it that you're going to analyze this a little bit. All right, so let's move on over to our course for this week. And in the course, you're going to have this essay available, The Dangers of Housekeeping. And we're going to have an analysis of this. So I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. So you can see it. Move it over here. Okay. And this essay is a typical five paragraph essay. And this is going to be about the effects of having to clean your house. Okay. So the cause is cleaning your house. The effects is what will happen to you if you try to clean your house. Now this essay is funny. All right. It is a little bit what we call satirical in that it's making fun of having to clean your house. And it's it's exaggerating things that happen around our house. But that's what makes it an interesting essay. And it can be argued. People can say, no, that doesn't happen. But this person is trying to bring a different light or different spin on why you wouldn't want to do housework. And, you know, Maybe a lot of us wouldn't want to do housework. So let's take a look at this. Firstly, 
here's our title, which your paper, when I assign the cause-effect essay to you, will have a title. And the next thing here is that there are many dangers of modern life are not put on the highway or in the workplace. Instead, dangers lurk where they're least expected, at home. I don't mean the dangers of faulty wiring, cheap ladders, or leaking microwaves. And here comes the thesis. Paragraph four is our thesis. No, I found that trying to keep a clean house can be very hazardous to my health. So here, no, I've tried that keeping a clean house is our topic and our controlling ideas can be very hazardous to our health. Now, since this is a cause-effect essay, the cause is here. No, I found that trying to keep a clean house can be very hazardous. That's our cause. And the effects is, or let me restate that. The cause is, I found trying to keep a clean house. That's the cause, keeping a clean house. The effect is, can be hazardous to this person's health. And then our expectation is that there's going to be three reasons in the supporting paragraphs of why it has a negative effect on her health. Why does cleaning house negatively affect her health? Okay, so we're going to go here. And she doesn't list them separately in the thesis. And sometimes your teacher is going to say, I want you to list all three reasons in the thesis. And I'll come back and show you how you could do that. But she has chosen to keep the thesis points, one, two, and three, combined in various hazardous to her health. She doesn't want to disclose them to you because she wants to surprise you. And she kind of wants to shock you. So sometimes in our thesis statement, if we want to shock somebody, we don't list the three things that we're going to talk about. Okay, so here she has a transition. For one thing, it does not pay to keep a clean kitchen. Okay, so, but we're still talking about the dangers of housekeeping here, so it still ties to our thesis. And now she's going to give the effects of if we try to do this. She says, the oven, for instance, fights back. Whenever I stick my head into an, the oven's greasy interior to spray it with Easy Off, I end up being choked by a chemical cloud. Well, that's hazard, hazardous to your health, right? Um, I'm glad I don't live in the city where I would have to put up with air pollution as well. Now, that is a sentence that does not fit in this particular paragraph. So that would be one that we would throw out. And it's part of the exercise that's at the bottom of this page. So I'll come back to that. But let's look at sentence eight. Um, let's look at sentence nine. When I scrub off the foam... I always break off my nails on the black rock hard globs cemented to the oven door. Cleaning the refrigerator can be dangerous too. As I lean down to wipe out the vegetable drawer, the open freezer lies in wait. That's an that's a metaphor for that it's waiting to get her. It's going to hurt her. It knows I must straighten up again and that I will inevitably bang my head on the freezer door. Garbage bags also resist tidiness. When I pull a bag out of the kitchen, or out of the kitchen can, seam split and liquid seeps out into my shoes. A jagged can lid slices through the bag, ready to slash my legs if I should bump the bag. The only bags that don't rip open, it seems, are the ones that cost a fortune to buy. That, too, is an irrelevant sentence, but we'll come back to it. Let's analyze this. Okay, let's take a look and analyze this. We have cleaning the dangers of housekeeping. She starts in the kitchen. Every example that she uses talks about dangers in the kitchen that affect her health. So health hazard number one, she is choked by a chemical cloud when she sprays the easy off. And as we all know, inhaling chemicals is not good for our health. Okay. Then she's scrubbing off the phone. She breaks off um, her nails. And so she's breaking her nails, hazardous to her health. And then when she cleans the kitchen and she straightens up, she hits her head on the freezer door. And then when she takes out the trash, then the sharp lids, lids of cans that maybe you've opened, can of peas or whatever, 
will slice her in the legs if she bumps her, her legs against that. So everything that she talks about relates to the cause, which is housekeeping, and the effects that are hazardous to her health. Secondly, she's now going to continue to talk about cleaning her house, but she's going to focus on the living room. So she says, now this is dangerous for me when I try to clean the living room. She says the light fixtures on the ceiling, for example, resent being taken down for cleaning. They refuse to come loose from the screws that anchor them. Then they drop like rocks to the floor. Moving furniture to vacuum the rug underneath causes trouble too. If I drag a heavy armchair across the rug, one of its legs will snap off. If I try to lift one side of the heavy sofa, the vacuum cord will wrap around my ankle and trip me. Moving furniture in general is a lot easier to do when you have someone to help you. That's an irrelevant sentence right there. We wouldn't put that in an essay. But again, this has to do with an exercise that is down below here. Number of four irrelevant sentences. So I'm doing this for you. All right. So paragraph two talked about the dangers of housekeeping, particularly in the living room. How are they dangerous? What's the effects of that? The effects to her health are that the lights fixtures will drop to the floor and it might hurt her as it drops to the floor because it's glass and it could shatter. And then if she moves um, the rug, an armchair across the, the rug, the legs will snap off. That could hurt her. And then if she tries to vacuum, the cord will wrap around her ankle and it will trip her. So there's three things there that are the effects of the dangerous effects of housekeeping. So she has one more effect that she's going to talk about for the dangers of housekeeping, and then she's going to focus this in the bathroom. And you'll notice the language that she used. She uses some real um, metaphorical language because she says the bathtub will seek revenge. Now, we know that bathtubs aren't alive, and so they can't try to take revenge on you, but she's trying to make these these inanimate things, these things that are not alive. She's trying to make them seem like they're alive so she could show that you how dangerous they are. So her last example is in the bathroom and she says, if I try to clean the bathtub, for instance, it will become so slippery that even a rubber mat, bath mat won't stay put. My particular bath mat or her particular bathtub has such a curved bottom that it's hazardous to stand in whether it's clean or not. Then she says, taking a shower in my clean tub can end up in a disastrous slip. The bath flo bathroom floor too enjoys a layer of dirty, uh, enjoys a layer of dirt. A clean wax floor will attract any stray drops of water in the room in order to turn itself into a slippery skating rink. So in other words, she'll, she'll slip like she's skating once that water drops to the floor. And then she says a job that always leads to danger is cleaning out the medicine cabinet over the sink. No matter how careful I am, glass bottles have a way of spilling from the shelves and shattering in the sink. So that's dangerous because it's glass and it shatters. And finding all the missing slivers is impossible no matter how well I clean up. Later, as I pat into the bathroom, a glass splinter will dig itself into my foot. So she's talking about slippery bathtubs falling having glass shatter on her and stepping on the glass. Now her conclusion, she says, that after the experiences of I have had in my house, I have decided that keeping a clean house is not as important as I thought. I would rather live in with dust and grime and stay healthy. Now this is pretty cool, right? It's, it's kind of funny. <clears throat> She's going to give up on cleaning her house because it's too dangerous for her health. So think about that. This is uh, this was written by a professional. So if you look at this and go, wow, I, I'll never be able to write like that. I, I'll never be able to write with figurative language, metaphorical language. Well, you're wrong. You will be able to do that one day. But I'm not expecting your first essay to have every single one of these elements that this person has. The humor, the sarcasm, the metaphorical language, that kind of thing. But this is what I am expecting you to have. So let's take a look here. 
Okay, let's take a look at this essay again. And our expectations here are, first and foremost, I would expect you to have a title. So we definitely want a title here. Okay. And I'll mark that up a little bit. So the dangers of house cleaning, that's engaging. And the other thing I would want you to have is a thesis. And remember, our thesis is generally located at the end of the first paragraph that usually tells us, right? So it's at the end of the first paragraph. No, I've found that trying to clean a, a house can be very hazardous to my health. So you guys will create a topic with controlling idea. The topic is broad. The controlling idea narrows it for your reader and gives us a sense of what we need to, to learn. Um, to really talk about a thesis as well, let's, let's take a look at um, some things that we might want to consider on that. So one thing our, th our thesis th statement does want to do, and it's, this is the important part here, is it tells the reader how you interpret the significance of your subject. You're not just going to state it, but why did you choose that? What, what is it that you want to really give them information about? What should they expect from the paper? It's like a roadmap when you're going on a trip. The destination is the topic, okay? And how you get there are your map points. Well, we're going to go to Chicago, then we're going to go to New York, then we're going to go down to Florida. But you have to tell your reader how you're going to get there your, to your destination. And then it directly answers the question asked by you. So for example, what are the dangers of housekeeping? The answer was, housekeeping is very dangerous because it is hazardous to your health. And then she finds out, um, we find out why. Usually too, a thesis makes a claim about something that other people can argue. So you have to have an argument, you have to have a position, and you want to tell that person why you stand with that position. It's usually a single sentence. And again, you are making a claim about something. So let's take a look at what a cause, that cause or effect thesis statement will look like. So let me give you a, a couple of examples here. So here's an example of strong ones. Let's look at one for cause. Many customers prefer to shop online for three important reasons. Okay. What causes customers to shop online? What are the causes? Well, this particular thesis doesn't tell you why. They're going to tell you in the body paragraphs, but they're not going to state it in the thesis. Most of the time, your English teacher wants you to state it in the thesis. Take a, a look at the second example. The increase in obesity in our country, that's our topic, here comes our controlling idea, is due to food commercials, cheap fast food, and video games. So this person puts the reason in the thesis. That's our map points. That's our controlling ideas, tells the reader how we're going to get there. And it's arguable. Um, we can make an argument that video games don't cause obesity. You know, we, we might argue that. This person will have to back it up with facts and research. But we certainly can, can argue that Food commercials don't necessarily cause obesity. People who buy food from those commercials maybe do. But you can see that it's a strong thesis. Let's look at an effects thesis. This essay will discuss the effects of watching too much TV on children's family life, interpersonal skills, and school life. So the effects of too much TV, okay, on, on um, of watching too much TV on children's family life, interpersonal skills, and school life. So that's the effect of too much TV. Then down here, we can say most people are not aware of the positive effects of simply walking for 20 to 30 minutes per day. This person's not listing the positive effects. They are going to make you discover them in the second, third, and fourth paragraphs. So there's two ways to write a thesis where you list the three things in the actual thesis right here, or you make a general claim about it, and then you have the person discover the reasons as they continue to read the paragraph.
Okay? Okay, so here we are on page 228, and your reading assignment for the week is going to be in Q Skills 5 and as well in Glass Castle because we're going to be looking at causes and effect of behavior in Glass Castle and integrating those into a cause and effect paper that you're going to write. But let's actually take another look at a sample essay that's in your book where you can look at the different causes, okay, what they call the culprits, the causes um, of your lack of energy. So this is going to be about um, not getting enough energy. So the thesis statement's interesting here. They're going to put the thesis statement by itself in bold letters. That's generally not what happens. It's usually the last sentence right here, but they've, they've put it out in bold letters to kind of give you an idea of what this is. So they say experts generally agree on three culprits, and that's the culprits of low energy, sleep, stress, and diet. And those are the three causes so this is going to be a cause essay, not an effect essay. So as we read through this, you can keep in your mind how would you have structured the essay yourself and look at it as a model. So they start with number one here. Now the article you're reading is going to be way more than a five paragraph essay. So your paper is not going to be anywhere near this long. Your paper is probably going to be one and a half to two pages long. But this at least gives you an idea of how well supported, how factual, how well researched this author did to put into his argument so he can convince you and me that uh, for his three reasons of why there's low energy. So they start with the sleep. Okay, that's the first thing they start with. And they talk about everything that's dealing with sleep and that's uh, one of the causes of this low energy. And on the next page, they do their second map point in their thesis about being stressed out. And so they'll talk about stress as another condition or cause of having this low energy and how, how it can be dangerous to the health. And then eating yourself to exhaustion. That's another one of those key points. So they take each key point, really, and they put it into its own uh, subheading, and then they have several paragraphs that talk about that particular map point in the thesis. Yours, like I said, will only be like one paragraph per point that you make. And then, of course, they have the concluding uh, sentence over in here. So that is the article. So part of your homework this week is going to be doing the vocabulary. And you can go online under assignments to, to do the vocabulary portion of that. It's more on the second page. And then you're going to circle the answer that best completes each statement. You're going to choose one of these to decide which is the best answer for you. Okay. And, um, and then there's more to do for this week. So have a, a wonderful week. Uh, work hard. And we're going to get started on our cause-effect essay this week.